well um i have decided to give you all a little present in the new year which is the training school planner so i've been speaking to a few of you guys and you're lacking the motivation you're not sure how to plan your year out so i'm hoping that this uh little planner will help you guys along the way this is something i've used in the past in my own training academy um it is a pen and paper written uh, planner if you are good at converting things digitally then you can obviously put this on a digital planner if you're a digital planner but i'm still very much um, a paper and pen girl uh, i'm trying to get used to things like trello to plan my life and i still can't get round to it so when you download the file you'll get this uh box here you'll get basically um it will come in a zip folder and um, which you'll have to uncompress um, and then you'll get this folder here which has these three documents in there. So how do these documents work? The first thing that I would suggest you look at is this one here, which is your monthly goals and your marketing planner. So let me try and make that a little smaller uh, so you can see what is on here. So on this folder here, on this uh, file here, there we go, guys. You can see that a little bit clearer now, I should hope. Um, this is basically giving you um, a plan of where you want to go for the next 12 months. Because if you don't plan what you want to uh, hit financially, if you don't have any goals, it's really hard to know what you're working towards because then you're just randomly uh, booking in people and giving discounts where you probably shouldn't be giving discounts because you can't afford to. And, you know, if you've got uh, bank loans from the last two years of uh, stress that we've all been through and you've got repayments and bills that you still need to pay, then you need to factor that in overall into your next 12 month target. Now, obviously, this could change. Um, you know, you might get COVID yourself. You might, uh, you know, have some form of illness or you may end up going into a lockdown again. But the point is that if you factor into this, some of those as well in terms of, you know, maybe having your targets a little bit higher, it gives you something to work towards. And the nice thing about having a target is that it gives you something to achieve. You might not always achieve it. And I've got some incredibly high targets for my business. I don't always achieve them, but it's worth having the targets there because when you do hit them, you feel good. And if you, you know, are, are sort of halfway through the month and you've only halfway hit your target, it gives you that extra drive and that extra push to move forward. So do try and target your business because that gives you sort of some idea of where you want to go. So what um, is this goal sheet for? This is what a lot of businesses use. Um, you know, they, they suggest that you write down things in life that you really, really want. I mean, this is all going back to manifestation, whether you want to believe in that or not. Um, but, but having a set goal of what you want, you know, uh, whether it's a new car, a new home, you know, if you want to have children in the future, then knowing what you're targeting for and what you need as an income um, and, and visualizing that every day does help so for this one you want to pop in your monthly target here so whatever you want to aim for so if this is january and then we're going to look at our aims in january um you know so it might be to increase your revenue it might be to uh, have more course bookings. It might be to launch a new course. Um, what's your financial target for the month? So this is, like I say, really important. And sometimes it is worth setting it higher. I always keep a plan of my previous year's income. Um, this helps you because really every year you should be doing better. So if you did, uh, say, £15,000 last January, then this January you might want to make that target £20,000. Um, so always make sure that you're you're going higher above your previous year goal. So use that as a, as a pivot to where you want to be this year. But also if this year you want to earn, say, £300,000, you know you've got to hit £25,000 a month. But you're also going to know that some months are better than others. So there's no point having a £25,000 uh, target 
in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and November. Um, you know, because at some of that point, you know, one of the months like December is going to be your worst month because people don't come for training during December. It's a really hard month to get people to put for training because they're so busy with clients. So for December, you know, you might be taking deposits for January. Your goal may be say six seven thousand pound um again uh, august generally is a bit of a crappy month for training because most people are going on holiday at that time or they've got the children off school so they generally don't book in for training it doesn't mean that you're not going to be taking deposits it doesn't mean that you're not going to be taking uh, money but you might not be taking final payments for courses or you might not be actually having courses and then selling kits to those people that are coming through so plan your year out plan how much money that you want to take look at your previous year's figures if this is your first year teaching, you may not have those figures in place. Um, but also think about the courses that you're going to be delivering. What courses have you got that um, you're going to deliver month in, month out? Uh, what are the costs of those? Um, and how many of them are you going to physically run every month? So once you've set your target, um, this bit here, this total bit here, just leave that blank for now. You want to then come over to this section here and we want to um, look at how we're going to reach that target. OK, so if you've got a £10,000 target, how are you going to reach that target? So it might be that if you've got a dermaplaning course and it's £250 that you want to sell um, 10 places with a £100 deposit, which will bring you in a revenue of a thousand pound and that still leaves you nine thousand pound to find for january um so where else are we going to get that so you might be running a microblading course and that's a thousand pound you are 250 pound deposit you want to book four places on that course um so that will be another thousand pound there so that will be two thousand pound uh, in total revenue coming in here so this is how we build up where we're going to get that target in from now don't get me wrong, this might change. So it might be that you book 12 people on your dermaplaning course. Um, you might only book two people on your microblading. This could be assessed throughout the month. So if you're doing better at one and not so good at the other, you might want to push the one that isn't doing as well because you know then as well, you've probably got spaces on a course. It's not really viable to, to run a course with one person. I don't think it is. Um, you know, the minimum that that most people will need to teach is one, so it's two people, because uh, then at least you've got two people to bounce off each other and you've got two people who can work on each other. So I always try to aim to have a, le a minimum of two people um, on a course when I was uh, running a big academy. And obviously, if you've got a lot of staff as well, this is great because, you know, you know, you've got a lot of course places to fill. So it really gives you a, an overview of who's doing what and who's who's busier and who's not and who you need to push um if you're working on your own though this totally is a great way of planning your entire life um this section here is going to be how are you going to break down those targets now this is really monday to friday it doesn't really mean uh, that you're not going to take money on a saturday and sunday you probably will if you do take money on a saturday and sunday maybe you can incorporate that into your monday figures but you want to really set those that ten thousand pound out over the week um for me i always find mondays and wednesdays and sometimes sundays are, are quite good days for me financially um sundays are hit and miss some 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 days i'll do really good on a, on a day and some sundays i won't take any money at all but wednesdays generally are quite a good day for me financially so i would put my larger proportion of money on a monday and a wednesday then my third largest on a tuesday and then i would divvy up the rest over the rest of the um of the days so this is what we want to be targeting a day so if you've got a ten thousand pound target that's going to be roughly £2,500 a week that you want to be uh, bringing in in revenue. And that's going to be a roughly a £500 a day target. So we now know that to reach our monthly target, we have to hit £500 on every day of the week, Monday to Friday, in order to achieve that £10,000 goal at the end of the week or end of the month. So again, this is easy for you. And I do this in my salons as well is I have a target sheet. So I know physically what I need to be bringing in and I know how far off my monthly target I am um, on a very quick uh, day by day, week by week glance. So at the end of week one, I can see here that my target here would be 500 pound on every day. Again, that can change. Um, 
and then if I take three hundred pound on Monday, I'll put three hundred pound in there. If I take um, say five hundred pound on um, uh, Tuesday, I can put that in here under this target section. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my uh, mouse for some reason; it wants to uh, put edits in here. Um, on Wednesday, I might take eight hundred pound and I put that in here. Thursday, I might take a thousand pound. I could put it in here and so on, and then I can add all that up. It might be at the end of the week, um, my goal was 2,500, I might have taken 3,800. So already I'm ahead of where I need to be. That doesn't mean that you should take the brakes, uh, you fall off your uh, accelerator uh, and apply the brakes. You need to still keep going because if you smash it and hit 20,000 pound, that's even better. Because at the end of the day, your, your goal for the year is what you want to set. So if you set £300,000 for the goal and you do £50,000 in a month, then you've got to find less for the rest of the month. So it, again, it doesn't mean that you're going to stop earning more money. It doesn't mean that you're just going to sit back and go, well, I've done that now, I've hit my target. It just means that you've got more opportunity and more chance to hit your goals and make even more money. But it just, again, gives you something to work towards. And also your staff as well, because your staff need to have something to work towards and some goals. So each week you're going to add those targets up and we're going to see a bigger picture, um, which we're going to put here as the uh, the total um, and compare it. So if our target was 10,000 and our total, we took, um, say, £16,000, we know we're... Uh, six thousand pound over our target for that now this one here um this section here is your marketing planner so we need to understand how we're going to get to that goal we've already worked out the target we know what we want to look at per day we know what items we want to push and how much we want to sell them for i mean for example if you've got a microblading course for a thousand pound and your deposit is 250 pound it might be that a student pays the full thousand pound so that would go towards your goals but how are you going to break this down so this is your marketing planner so if this is january um i can't even remember what day the first fell on i think the first fell on a saturday am i right so i say so um that'd be saturday sunday so the week would start from the third here so monday tuesday wednesday thursday i know we're now um mid january nearly or fifth fifth or sixth of january but from here you can start to plan your marketing campaigns so um the ninth may, will be a monday so you might want to send out a happy new year email um with a offer for you know book one course and get uh, 10 percent off a kit or uh, book one course and get an additional course on the day for x amount of money um so however you're going to work towards that goal and just think so this here is going to be dermaplaning campaign um, the next week, microblading campaign. Next week, another campaign, you know, whatever course you've got running up. So you're going to plan your email campaigns. And then from there, you might want to go, okay, so I'm going to post on Sunday uh, here about my microblading um, on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm going to post in some Facebook groups on the 10th. So you're going to plan out what you're going to do over that month in order to reach that £10,000 target. Does that make sense, guys? Hope that makes sense. It is quite self-explanatory. It might seem overwhelming, but the more you get into this, the easier it gets. And I would plan it month by month. So for this one, I'm going to plan this. I would have planned this in December, ideally. Um, February would be what I'd be working on now. And then uh, in February, I'd be working on March. But that doesn't mean um, don't plan January. If you've downloaded this in January, if you're watching this in January, it doesn't mean just uh, forego January. Um, now is the time to really start uh, capitalising on people um, who want to learn new things for the new year. So start your planning, start marketing, start your social media, start getting your emails out there. If you've not got an emailing list, there are ways to create an emailing list. There is a way to um, build that up. I, this is not what I'm going to go into today, but I would say the most important thing is to get an email list. I see a lot of people put a lot of investment into social media and they build up these social media channels where you're building, you know, 20,000 people on Instagram and 15,000 people on Twitter and you might have 7,000 people on Facebook. But what I will say to you is if that was to disappear overnight, how are you going to market your business? So I would always suggest never having all your eggs in one basket. Don't 
uh, rely on social media as your only source of marketing. You need to be able to get those people who are following you on social media into some form of data list. So you need their emails, you need their contact details, even a, a phone number that if you need to market to them directly, then you can, because that's the best way to market, guys. On social media, you know, if that person isn't on the computer at that time, when that post goes out and they're actually specifically scrolling and your post pops up, they're not going to see your offers or their, their uh, your posts. If you send them a text message, if you send them uh, an email, then they're going to be more likely to see that and action on it. So you, you really need to be pulling your data off social media and into an emailing list and then this would form part of your marketing planner i'm not here obviously today to talk to you about marketing um but this is just sort of giving you an idea of how to build that list and how to move forward over the next 12 months um do you think about what i've said do you think about pulling um your email leads off uh, social media and using them as an integral part of your planner if you don't have an emailing list now perhaps put that into your goals that by the end of january you're going to have 300 people on that mailing list by the end of february a thousand and then you're going to grow your mailing list from there so what else have we got in the pack that is important the next one is your training academy planner so you might actually want to look at this first um and plan your courses out over the year first this is really again up to you how you personally want to do this it does help when you're planning your targets and it does help when you're planning um uh, your items that you want to be pushing uh, but again I would go and do the first list first and, and sort of get an idea of where I want to be and then start planning into your training planner so the easiest way to um, book your courses in is to have a visual aid like this a lot of people go through the, a diary and they write in random dates but actually this is a lot easier to to see and to visualize so you can see here um january the 10th we know is a monday it's usually a very good day to teach so if you've got a um lip master class for dermal filler you might want to deliver it on the 10th there it might be a two-day course so that's going to straddle the 10th and the 11th so you'd obviously block those two dates out there you've also then you know following monday and tuesday if you're a trainer you're going to probably be working every monday and tuesday teaching and every wednesday thursday friday maybe even a saturday if you're bold or thursday friday saturday uh, in your clinics so monday uh, and tuesday here you might want to have a dermaplaning course here maybe a hair extension course on the tuesday i'm just throwing random courses out guys so i'm not saying this is actually a uh, gospel or this is what you're going to be teaching i've just got so many different uh types of training academies that purchase manuals from us uh, and again um, you know work your way through this so you've got your whole year planned out for example as well if you've got a lip masterclass here on the 10th you're not going to want to put one in on the 17th because it's going to be too soon so having some strategic planning that maybe you run a lip masterclass every six to eight weeks that's a good way of planning your diary especially if it's a popular course and if you're filling that course up and um, then you may want to do it every four weeks if it's a little slower to book up you can move it every six to eight um, and then obviously if you've got a course that you know isn't isn't very popular but you know some people do like to book on it you can maybe run that every three months you could run it on the 17th of january the 17th of april or around the about the 17th of april um and then july and then october november those kind of months there so you can plan your diary this way so you can write down a list of the courses that you want to deliver how often a, a part you want to deliver them how easy you feel that they're going to fill up remember some courses are more popular this can be changed again don't think that this is absolutely set in stone i've done this in my own academy um i've had um if you can see here it says trainer so for every trainer they would have their own uh, mapping uh like planning uh, uh training course planning all mapped out like this in the calendar so if this was me then my name would be here then if it was my trainer you know trainer two would be uh, listed here and whatever them their courses could be then they would be listed on this planner so in terms of that um you know you could have a dermaplaning course here if you're teaching it but your other trainer might be teaching lip filler um so you've got everybody's diary 
uh, booked in. And then what you can then start to do is actually publish the full date on your computer or on your social media, on your website um, via email. So you can say next dates for lip filler training is the 10th of January, the 28th of February, the um, 19th of March and so on. You can build it up like this. So there's a little few references here. So BH UK is Bank Holiday England. So you can see um, we've got quite a few, I think, in April um, and June. Yeah, so you can see uh, here we have, um, we've got the 2nd of May there in June. And people generally don't book courses on bank holidays. I've, I'm yet to ever book a course and have people book on it on a bank holiday generally they want the day off um but then this um year in june we've got the second and the third of um june which thursday and friday are bank holidays um probably not really essential to you guys um because those uh are the jubilee and they're on a thursday and friday it doesn't really affect the training um and i've also put something else there that says um staff vacation so if you've got somebody off you know they're, they're off in february across uh this week here you can just put sv all across there and it just means that you know that your staff member has booked that off as a holiday or you're going on holiday and not to book any courses on there you can also use this for one-to-one -one training as well so if you have somebody who rings you up and says they want a one-to-one -one, or you've got to uh, you've got two or three people from an academy or a salon who are coming to you specifically for training or maybe you're going to them you can also use this to book out your trainers um where they're due to go or where they're due to be so plan your year out well um december i say i've got the map there uh, the calendar there it's not really going to ever be your busy month um I've, again i don't think i've ever delivered a training course in december i think maybe i did the first few days of december but it wasn't really a busy course it, i think maybe had a few people on there not as many as I would normally teach. So again, it's not really profitable or viable to do that because most people have got salons and they want to be running their salons. So set this out. Again, like I say, it doesn't have to be set in stone, but it gives you an overall idea of when dates are there. Now, if you're running a derma planning course and you're just not getting traction, you're just not getting dates filled up, but you've got a body wrap course that is absolutely on fire and everybody's booking in for it, then swap your derma planning for a body wrap course. You know, it's really easy to do you can do that you're allowed to do that is your business you can swap and change you can also put on your website that dates are subject to change as well but just remember to update and change your website as you go the easiest way to actually change your dates is to just put sold out so rather than me saying to someone oh yeah i didn't run a derma planning course because there just wasn't enough numbers just put sold out um the, it, it makes you look busy it makes you look like you're booking courses out when you're probably not um all the time we don't every training school has courses they don't fill up so don't think that that's uh something unusual but a busy training academy will do better than a quiet a, a training academy so if you keep cancelling courses if you keep saying oh we're cancelling it due to low numbers it doesn't look good uh, the same goes if you've only got one person on the course never cancel just go deliver the training get models you know you might be working at a loss that's your fault for bad planning um, and not getting enough people on the course to be fair um, it's not the student's fault and i don't see how it's fair to cancel the student who's probably booked a hotel booked their travel given up a lot to come to you for that day and um, for them to cancel because there's not enough numbers on the course i really don't believe in that so um by doing this you know you, you can see maybe there's only one person and you can push the course a lot more so that's your training planner it really is simple to use um i'm going to go into another form now which is the student booking form so this is um if you keep all this into a folder uh, i had an a4 folder which i kept everything in um and i had uh, sections which was my january february march april may and i could easily get to the section that i needed to as people were uh, trying to book him so again i had people booking online so don't think that people 
had to ring me up and do everything the old-fashioned way or contact me via social media people could actually go on my website book a place on the training course and they still can do that and when i deliver a face-to-face training they go on my website and book but how do you track it there are apps that are crm apps that do all this for you i do use them but i like to visually see things and i like to have it written down in front of me it's also really handy because if you go on a training course or if you are sick or anything like that and you need to get hold of your students for any reason you've got all their contact information there it also means when you're on a training course you don't have to if you're maybe on a different location than your own academy you don't have to then try and find whether that student has paid a deposit if that page that student has done their pre-course material and so on it's all there in black and white in front of you or pink and gray so again does self-explanatory uh, course name will go here um so if you've got um 15 courses for the month then you're going to have 15 of these sheets in your diary um so you're going to have your course name you're going to have the date of the course here and the cost having all this information to hand is, is really good because if you're still not sure of your own costs um especially in new businesses and things if you're not 100 percent sure what you charge you've got a lot of courses around the similar price it's a quick glance when you're booking someone in you could go yeah the cost is 375 pound the location of the course as well um some people will always only teach from where they are based um, but other people are traveling trainers and um, that's not a bad thing neither um but just make sure you put your location in there. I always travel out. I don't have my own premises. Um, so having the location is helpful for you because if you've got two or three courses running on the same day, uh, running on the same uh, month, uh, but different locations, you'll need to make sure you're booking people on the right month uh, or the right course, the right location. Um, the last payday. So if the training is on the 28th of February and you require payment two weeks before that course, you need to put your payday in there as the 14th of February. So this means that by that day, these are the date that people are going to have to pay their remaining payments for you. And also your maximum number of students that can be booked on the course. So this is really important if someone else is doing the bookings for you, because the last thing you want is 20 people on a course when you can only teach six. It'd be great, wouldn't it, to have that many and, and take that kind of money. Um, but the logistics don't always work out. So make sure you put your maximum number there. Uh, so as a student books in, you're going to capture their name here. Um, we're going to take their email address and we're going to take their contact phone number uh, so we can obviously get hold of them. And then we've got steps and actions that we should really follow. And this makes sure that everything is neat and tidy and all our paperwork is in order. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is send a booking form, terms and conditions and the invoice for them to pay the deposit. They may pay over the phone, so that's great. But sending a booking form or your terms and conditions that can be digitally signed is really great, especially for things such as no refunds on deposits. Um, if they cancel uh, a couple of weeks before the course that they're not going to get the final payments back and also other um, terms in there to cover your back in the eventuality of anything going wrong so things like if they're not happy with the training that obviously they need to raise that within a set period of time after the course so you're going to obviously either tick this or you can put a date in here um or you can just write yes or whatever you want to write maybe a signature uh, to say that that's been actioned you then obviously pop a date here or um, the amount here or whatever for the deposit that's been paid if there's any pre-course materials that you want to send whether it's a pre-course video or pre-course manual or pre-course material that they need to action then obviously this section here will cover that um then the final payment that is um due when it's received so make sure you've got that so if student one two is paid but student three hasn't we know we can chase them up and then finally this is the last action but a certificate has been issued so i don't know if you guys give certificates out on the day whether you send them digitally after the course um maybe some of you post them out i generally rarely give them on the day because uh, i always find that people are traveling so they're traveling on the train they're traveling by plane or whatever um you know walking even to a car when it's raining the certificates can often get damaged uh, so i send them digitally and they can print them off at home or i can post a, a hard copy out to them and they uh, have that in better condition than maybe when they took it so you've got all your information here you've got a good checklist so every course you can look like say 
it's January now, you can look through um, February and go, I've got three spaces here left on this course. I need to get those filled up. And you can then do social media posts, posting groups, maybe send a mail shot out to say, right, we've got this course on this date with a place still available um, you know, call to book now. So you've got all that information at a glance. So obviously you'll see this only goes up to four students. It doesn't mean that that's the maximum you can book on a course. You can book 12, 16, 20. It's really up to you how many you can handle. Um, you just print off another one of these forms and then uh, just add that behind this one. And write maybe continued at the bottom here so you know uh, to turn that over and uh, action as you start to fill your courses up so that's pretty much it it is really straightforward um there is more things you can do there's more paperwork i'm not going to bombard you with complete overall of too much paperwork because otherwise it gets really tedious um and that's all you're generally seeing to do uh but this is really simple really straightforward and it's really quick as well which is the most important thing because we're so time starved and we're doing a thousand things especially if you're a mom and you've got you know you've got children and a husband you know husbands are worse than children um but you've got all that to look after you've got to run your home you've got to run your salon you've got to run your training academy having things quick and easy to look at is uh, brilliant and i always found this to be a great help so that's it for this guys i hope this free pack has helped you or it will help you um if you've got any questions on it do give me a shout but i think it's pretty self-explanatory so hopefully you shouldn't need to uh, be asking me anything but if you do um, you're more than welcome to as well um but like i say download those three um pdfs you can print them off and um, put them in an a4 planner and start planning your 2022 Good luck, guys. I hope it's a really prosperous one for you because after the last two years, we need it. But if you need anything else, um, training manuals, um, starting your own academy, maybe you haven't started your own academy yet and you're confused of where to start, feel free to get in touch and we'll give you um, some guidance on that as well. Take care, guys. Bye.